Hi guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our chain mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, a big hi, hello, welcome, how are you? So pleased to see you here. Thanks for popping in and spending some time with me today. So today I've got a video um, that belongs to the Mail Club subscription box for April and uh, this one's uses the weave Japanese 12 and 2. Um, I've given the, the, the kit the name Trying to Touch the Sun. Um, it comes from a song by an Australian band called Goanna that was very popular in the 80s. The song is Razor's Edge. Um, I figured in this time with um, the COVID virus and the isolation and, and all that we're going with at the moment, people losing jobs and everything, living on a razor's edge um, seemed like um, an appropriate theme for this um, for this bracelet. Anyway, guys, that's enough of me babbling and carrying on. Let's just jump straight into it. Okay, guys, well, here's a sample piece of our trying to touch the sun bracelet. So as you can see, it's just a basic Japanese 12 in 2 weave uh, with a row of beads up the middle. Um, it's quite stiff, so it's almost bangle-like in, um, in its form rather than a bracelet. So coming up on the screen right now are the list of materials and tools that you're going to need. So just to make note, along with um, our smooth jaw pliers, you're also going to need um, a pair of wire cutters and quite possibly, if you have them, um, some crimping pliers. You can do it without crimping pliers, um, but they, they may be of help to you. Okay guys, we're going to start making this bracelet up by creating this center chain that you can see here where the, the beads are. So to do that, we're going to be using the uh, 1 8 of an inch rings in the 18 gauge AWG and the 16 gauge AWG um, 8 millimeter ID rings. And we're going to make up a chain that is uh, one of the small rings and then two of the large rings, one of the small rings, two of the large rings, to the length that you require your bracelet to be. Now, when you do this, um, you need to keep in mind that it it is a little sort of like a bangle, so it, it's not necessarily going to um, fit closely to your wrist. And there is also a little bit of a a space there um, with the clasp attachment okay so uh, just as a guide for this one to fit my wrist and I normally make them up to about eight inches in length I did 18 of our large rings down the center okay so if you guys go ahead and continue to make up that chain to the the length that you need it to be um, and then I will meet you back here and I will show you what our next step will be. Okay guys, so I've made up my sample chain, one, two, one rings, all the way down, doubling up the large rings. So I've just made up a short piece here. Obviously, you'll need to make this up to the length that you require. So next I'm going to uh, cut myself a bit of beading wire. Now you want the beading wire to be obviously at least the length of your chain at full stretch. Um, with a, you know, a good bit more on the end because we're going to create loops on either end. So um, the beading wire I used was this particular one here. Now I have no preference. I am not a beater by any stretch of the imagination, guys. This just happened to be um, a beading wire that I picked up. Um, if you guys have got a preference um, or you think that there's a better beading wire to be used, I'm happy to hear, I'm happy to learn. So by all means, leave any comments uh, below in the comment box um, if you have a preference for beading wire, why you think it would be um, a better choice. Um, as I said, I'm all ears. Um, 
as I said, not a beater by any stretch of the imagination. But anyway, this is what I've used for those that are interested. So you can see all the details here. Um, and when you cut the beading wire, as I said, you want it to be at least the length of your piece of chain, make sure it's in full stretch, plus a good bit more for those loops that we're going to create. Um, so, you know, I would give it at least another, around about another five centimeters. Um, for those that don't use centimeters, uh, a couple of inches. Um, I would rather have way too much left over and have to cut it off than not have enough and have to pull it all apart again. So just create your beading wire like that. If you're um, a beater, you may not need to leave as much left over as I do. Um, as I said, not good at this. But uh, yeah, cut that so you've got the length that you need. Um, set that aside for just a second. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take up one of our attachment rings. So this one is a 16 gauge 3.5 millimeter ID ring, which is often the size that I use to attach my clasps and, and such to. Um, so again, if you've got a different one, by all means, <clears throat> a different preference, by all means use that. This is just my suggestion. So I'm going to close this ring up now. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to grab my little piece of beading wire. I'm going to grab one of my teeny tiny crimps. Now, these are just tiny little plated crimps, <laughs> tiny things. Um, you have to excuse me, I don't have a magnifier. There we go. So I'm going to feed that onto my wire. I'm going to grab my beading, my, my clasp attachment ring. I'm going to feed that onto the beading wire as well. And then I'm going to loop my beading wire back over the top of the ring and through that crimp. So you can see why I leave myself a good bit of beading wire. Um, I'm a bit thumbs and fingery here. As I said, I'm not very good about this. If there's a better technique, again, I'd love to hear about it, guys, because I am not a beater, never have been, probably never will be, but I'm always happy to learn a new skill. So tighten your crimp up against your ring as close as you can get it. So if you've got uh, crimping pliers, go ahead and use those now. If you don't, if you've just got your smooth jawed pliers, generally, depending on the crimp, um, you can just smoosh it a little bit with your beading plier and it will flatten it out. I mean, your smooth jawed pliers. The thing I like with the crimping pliers is you can they do have a couple of settings where you can then come back in and round that out a little bit. So it crimps it nice and tight against your wire, but then you can come in and reshape it so it's not just a, a squished flat piece of wire of oh, metal. Once you've got that all in place and you're happy with that, make sure you're happy with the point before you then go in and um, cut any excess tail off. So I've got a little bit of a tail there so I'm going to go in and snip that off as close as I can to my crimp. As I said I'm not an expert at this sort of thing but uh, I'll give it a go. A bit of gunk off my cutters. Alright so there you go guys I have attached my beading wire to my clasp attachment and now I want to attach this to my chain. So I'm going to take a, another one of the 1 8th of an inch rings. I'm going to feed that through the one on the end of the chain and then feed that through the ring, okay, that our beading wire is attached to. And I'm going to close that up. Okay. So this is what we've got at this stage. We've got our chain and our beading wire attached. And what I want to do is I want to be able to capture our beading wire in between, sorry about that, in between um, a couple of our 1 8 rings. Okay, so we've got our beading ring in place there and we want to put another ring that joins 
this ring here to our chain, capturing the beading wire in place at the same time. So to do that, we just go through here and then through the large rings in our chain and then we close that up and then we position everything correctly give that wire a bit of a tug so it's in position okay so this it, our work should look like this now I would consider this the back of our weave because you can see that um, crimp there if you're very skilled at crimps and you made that crimp really, really small, you might actually be able to stick another ring over the top of that. If you can, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm not that talented with crimps, so I'll just be turning it around this way so that this becomes the top of my weave. And this is the, the bottom, the piece that sits side that sits against my skin. All right, so once I've got that into place, our next step is to start putting our beads in. So I just want to make sure that I've got my wire going between our large rings, okay, so that they're going through the middle of our weave between our large rings. And I'm going to bring one of my beads, okay, so these are the crackle glass beads, six millimeters. Feed that onto my beading wire and then I'm just going to separate that out and pop it in there okay now making sure I've got everything positioned where I want it to be I need to put the beading wire between the next one as well and again to help keep that in place I'm just going to feed it through there like that and I'm going to pop the second small ring on the other side of that beading wire to help hold the beading wire in place so what that looks like is we just take one of our small rings again we go through both sets of pairs making sure we've captured that beading wire between the pairs of rings and we're just going to close oh, close that up you are going to need small pliers for this uh, this is fairly tight and it's quite a snug fit which is the way I wanted it to be um, and there you go that's what it looks like so we need to do that all the way down our, our bead again so again i'm going to position the wire to make sure it sits completely between those two next large rings take up a new bead feed it onto the beading wire bring it down so that it now the bead now sits between those two rings like that to just help hold this in place i'm just going to feed this through the next one so just it just sort of helps lock it in place you may not need to do that it's up to you so I'm going to then put a, another small ring in here double that ring up so that it on the other side of the beading wire so it locks the beading wire in place okay So it is tight, It's um, so it will take a little bit of patience, it will take your thinnest uh, chain nose pliers that you've got, but it makes for a fabulous bracelet by the end of it. Of course you can use slightly bigger rings than the ones that I've chosen, it will mean that your weave uh, won't perhaps um, be as stiff as this one that it won't the weave won't sit up by itself which I quite like with Japanese weaves I like to see see if I can show you this that's sitting up all by itself okay it's not flopping all over the place if you choose larger rings it is going to fold in on itself if you're happy with that and you're oops, sorry hit the microphone if you're happy with that and you're struggling with these smaller rings by all means make some adjustments but I find this fits these beads in here nice and snug. Uh, there's no movement moving around in the beads. It, it just all works for me. All right, guys, so just continue to do that down the length of your 
uh, bracelet, adding an extra, uh, a new bead every time and locking that bead into place with uh, one of your small rings. And you just need to do that um, until you get all the way to the end. And then I can show you what our next step is. So you just go ahead and do that, guys. And um, I'll meet you back here when you're ready. Okay, so I've got to the end um, of my piece of chain. Put all my beads in. I've got the uh, beading wire on the end here captured by two as well. Um, I'm just making sure that I've got a little bit of movement there that I haven't pulled that beading wire ultra tight okay so what I'm going to do now is um, take up another one of the 1 8 rings and I'm going to feed that through um, once uh, through the end pair of rings um, now this is going to be the top of my weave, so make sure you've got it sitting uh, on the same side of your beading wire as, as this one here, okay? So that the, those top rings are both on the same side of the beading wire. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take up another one of our tricky little crimp beads. I'll need to feed that onto the beading wire. And I'm also going to pre-close one of my clasp attachment rings. Okay. Pop that on there as well. And do what we did before where we fed the feeding wire, uh, sorry, the beading wire. We fed the beading wire over the top of our clasp attachment ring and through our crimp bead again. Again, I apologize for my total lack of elegance and ability to use beading wire correctly. And I'm going to try and bring that down, the crimp down, as close as I can get to where those um, where those two rings coming off the weave are, okay? I want that down there. I don't want it, I don't want a great big, um, a great big loop or a great big piece of string. So basically I want to be, I want it to create a loop that's big enough for our clasp attachment ring to go through but also allows that clasp attachment ring to go through the um, last small ring there. So this takes a little bit of fiddling. As I said, I'm not an expert with this, so I, you know, there may be an easier way. So I've just opened that up. I've put it through that end ring so that I've got, you know, something to position my work with. So once I'm reasonably happy with where that crimp is placed and the beading wire. I'm going to come in and I'm going to squish that crimp with my um, smooth jaw pliers to put it into place. And now if you want to round it and you don't have enough room, again, you can take that ring off for the moment. You can get your crimping pliers, go in there, give that crimp a little bit better shape if you can. And then once you've done that, you can come back with your uh, clasp attachment ring. You can feed it through both the loop and that final ring. And then before closing it, guys, you might as well pop your clasp onto it. Okay. So that's what it looks like. So again, the same thing we've got what would be considered the base of the weave, the bottom of the weave, the top of the weave. Now that I've got that where I'm happy, reasonably happy, um, I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut that tail off my beading wire as close to the crimp as I can get it. And there you go. There's that section done. So 
I mean, I'll, I'll re reiterate it again. I'm not a beater. I'm not good with beating wire. My apologies to people who are. <laughs> I'm sure you're screaming at me now that this is not the best way to do it. I am happy to learn, guys. So, you know, suggestions, hints, nicely worded criticism. I'm all open for. Leave them below in the comment section. All right. So once we've got this bit together, uh, we're going to want to put the side rings into place. So to do that, we just go back to one end. It does not matter which end of your bracelet you choose. I might just grab this end so I've got a little bit more to hold on to because of the clasp. And then taking up again your one eighth of an inch rings, we're going to put two in this first pair on one side and then four in this, four in this, four in this, just on the one side. So two in the first, first pair of large rings. So I'm just working down one side at the moment. And then we want to put four of the one eighth rings in every one after this, except for the last pair of rings where obviously we'll just pop the two like we did for the beginning. So if you guys want to go ahead and pop those rings in, we will need to do the same on the other side. So it's up to you if you want to do them all at once or if you just want to work down one side and then turn around and work down the other side. So just go ahead and pop those in. Remember, two, working down one side, two here, four here, and then you can do the same for the other side or you can leave that and do that later. Totally up to you. Anyway, guys, you go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here to show you the next step. Okay, so once you've added all those rings all the way down that you need, um, we're gonna go back to the beginning of our work and we're going to pick up this pair of rings here, the single pair here, and the first two rings here in our set of four. Okay, so just pick up those four rings, just like that and close your large ring up. You're going to want to double that large ring. So just put it through the exact same path through those four rings just there. And then once you've got those into place, we're going to add a pair of our small rings to our large rings. Now, of course, you can pre-close these particular rings and put them on the large rings as you're adding them. Um, how you wish to do this is up to you guys. All right, so we've got our next ring that we want to place. We'll need to go through this pair of rings that we've just added, the pair of rings that's remaining on this large ring, and then the first pair of rings on the next large ring there. So take up a large ring, go through those three pairs of rings, as I showed you. Okay, if you've pre-closed your small rings, now's the time to pop them on, otherwise you can just add them later. Either way works fine. Close that large ring up, double your large ring. And then if you haven't added your small rings yet, add your pair of small rings now. And we just keep going down the bracelet like that, guys. That's all there is to it. Once you've got down the end there, you flip your work over and you do the same on the other side. And once you've placed those side rings, that's it. You're done. So there's your trying to touch the sun bracelet using the uh, beautiful Japanese 12 into ring uh, weave.
Alrighty guys, well that's it. That is the video tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it um, and that you like the bracelet. If you did uh, like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you guys. Drop that into the comment section down below. While you're here, don't forget to check out some of our other videos that we have here. Um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And last but not least, guys, don't forget to give our shop up here a little bit of love. Um, that's where we sell all the bits and bobs and you know what's that you're going to need to make this bracelet and many of our other projects. Alright guys, thanks once again for popping along and spending some time with me. And I truly hope I get to see you again in the very near future. Bye.